Geometry on Wednesdays, we wear pink, which I am, by the way. On the 4th of March, SFBA, what's that stand for, Nevaeh? Yeah. SWBA? Kill bro. Oh. Yep, students will be able to. The T is just silent. Simplify radicals, use the Pythagorean theorem, and it's converse. We're going to simplify radicals, use the Pythagorean theorem, and it's converse. Why am I always so far away from the grade? Hey, Pythagorean theorem. Yeah. You randomly do that to me, Chad? It's because I'm a liar. Then <laughs> <laughs> why shot if you were going to get my answer? Think why bother? You just wasted our time. It's like there's all sorts of things. Well, that's just like kind of red is a shade of pink, so. Nice. No, pink's a shade of red, actually. Hey, converse, it can be the opposite. Okay. So, we're going to um, go through reviewing simplifying radicals a little bit longer. We did this on our warm up for a bit. We're going to do it more here, okay? So, square root of 8, we want to check for perfect square Four. factors. So, is it reasonable for us to say, since 8 is not a perfect square, is it reasonable to say that 16 can be a perfect square that goes into 8? No, why not? Because 16 is bigger than 8. Is it, is it reasonable for us to say 9 can go into 8? No, because 9 is bigger than 8. Was it reasonable for us to say it might go into 8? 4. Because it's smaller than it. And is 4 a factor of 8? Yeah, how many times does it go into it? Twice. So the square root of 8 is the same thing as the square root of 4 times the square root of what number? 2. Two. And now be very careful that we have to do a square root times the square root to get another square root. You can't just call it normal 4 or normal 2 because it has a square root in those. Kind of like its own little universe where it's all square root numbers. Um, because normal 4 times normal, or normal 4 or normal 2, if they're all for the value of that, like, So now, why did we choose the square root of 4? Besides, I, I kind of guided us there. Okay. What's this, what is the square root of 4? 2 is normal 2. So the square root of 4 is normal 2. The square root of 2 will just stay the square root of 2, because there's no perfect square smaller than it in the square root of 1. And the square root of 1 would not help us out at all here. So we leave our answer as 2 times the square root of 2. We have our answer as 2 times the square root of 2. Okay? What? So on letter B, square root of 108, where would it be reasonable for us to start checking for perfect square factors? 100. Why 100, Wyatt? Because it's the biggest one that's smaller than it. And yeah, we want to check for the biggest perfect square that helps us. Now, how can we know whether or not 100 is a factor or goes into 108? How can we know? What does it mean if it's a factor of it? It can multiply to get there, but we can also do what by that number? Divide by that number. Very good. Okay. So we can take a calculator and take 108 divided by 100. So then we have a calculator in front of you. Would you want to take 108 divided by 100? Okay. 108 divided by 100. We're trying to see if 100 goes into it. Okay, so if you get a decimal, it doesn't go into it. 1.88. Oh, wait, that makes sense. So if you get a decimal, it doesn't go into it. So let's try the next one 81. Kale, does 81 go into 108? No, okay, you can double check on a calculator as well by taking 108 divided by 81. And then we can try, okay, 108 divided by 64. Does that one work, Mason? No. no, okay. So I go on the next one, 108 divided by 49. Does 49 go into it? Can I get another paper? No, it does not. Um, 49, does it go into 108? No. Okay. 36, does it go into 108? Yes. Yeah, 
Yeah, how many times? Three. Three. So we can say the square root of 100 is the square root of, a, of 36 times the square root of 3. Because normal 36 and normal 3 multiply together to get a normal 108. So the square root of 108 is the same thing as the square root of 36 times the square root of 3. Now, why does square root of 36 help us? Because 36 is a perfect square. What is the square root of 36? 6. So instead of calling the square root of 36, we can call it normal 6. And now it's 6 square root of 3. Letter C, we saw one of these that was very similar to this. We had 2 square root of 98 on our warm up. This one's very similar to that. So we have a 4 times whatever we're going to end up being able to get pull out of here or have the square root come out of there. So square root of 125, where would it be reasonable for us to start checking? 125. 121. Okay? Uh, Maybe 25. Okay? What is, what is uh, square root of 25 times what would equal square root of 125? 5. If you take 125 divided by 25, you get 5. So it would be reasonable for us to start checking here, but Marissa is right that the square root of 25 is what we're looking for in the end. 4 times the square root of 25 times the square root of 5. Now why does the square root of 25 help us? Because it's a perfect square. And so what is the square root of 25? 5. So instead of 4 times the square root of 25, it's 4 times normal 5. And we still have times the square root of 5. And what does 4 times 5 equal? 20. 20 times the square root of 5. So we want to look for perfect squares that go into or are factors of the number underneath the radical. The square root is also called a radical symbol. Okay. A little bit of vocab there, the square root is also called the radical symbol. And the number underneath is also called the radicand. The radicand. Not radicand, it's radicand. Okay. Multiplying radicals. Square root of 3 times square root of 2 is the same thing as the square root of 6. Just like here, square root of 25 times square root of 5 is the square root of 125. Square root of 3 times square root of 2 is the square root of 6. We use them both underneath the square root, underneath the radical, and we multiply the numbers together. Now, if we pretend like this was secretly just a 1 times the square root of 3 and a 1 times the square root of 2, this ended up being 1 times 1 is 1 times the square root of 6. We don't have to have 1 times something, do we? So that's why we don't have it there. But here, 3 times the square root of 5 times 7 times the square root of 5. What's 3 times 7? Anyone? And what's the square root of 5 times the square root of 5? Square root of 25. Ha, ha, ha. But wait, there's more. It's like Billy Mays box me. Did you guys? Did you guys know Billy Mays? Yes. Okay, why did you just add the one in front of the six? Because I was just saying there's secretly a one multiplying okay, in front of there. Have to put that. Nope. Okay. I was just showing what, how, why we do e the way we would. Yeah, good question. Um, Billy Mays, he he was like a um, infomercial guy. And uh, he had like stuff like OxyClean he would like advertise. And basically, he would just yell at you during the commercial to buy things. And it was great. Billy Mays is hysterical. You should play one for us. Uh, oh, okay, when die. So, um, 3 times 7 is 21. So we multiply the numbers that are underneath the radical together. We multiply the numbers that are underneath the radical together. Yeah, good question. So now, is the square root of 25, what is that? Five. 5. So we have 91 times normal 5. Then we can say, okay, what is 91 times normal 5? 105. 105. So that's our answer. 2 divided by the square root of 3. What about some swift movement? Okay. 2 divided by the square root of 3. We do not like our radical in our denominator. We don't like our radical, our square root, and our denominator in the bottom part of the fraction. So we got to get it out of there. Does anybody know how we get it out of there? Multiply. Multiply. By what? Not by 2. So 
What number can you multiply by something and not change the value at all? One. If you multiply by one, it stays the same, doesn't it? So we need to make something, we need to multiply by, look at my hands. One. By one. So I put it in air quotes for a reason. Because one can look differently. What is five divided by five? One. One. So five divided by five is one. Right. So this is one. It just looks different, doesn't it? Or I could say three divided by three is one. So that's still one. So if we multiply by five over five or three over three, it's still one. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by the square root of three over the square root of three because square root of three is what's on the denominator. We're going to multiply by the square root of three divided by the square root of three because the square root of three divided by the square root of three, if you look at my hands, is secretly one. So we're multiplying by one, we just made it look different. We're not changing the actual value of it. We're just making it look different. Now when we do fractions, we multiply the top together and the bottom together. So what's two times the square root of three? Just two times the square root of three. We just push them together. Kind of like two times x is two x. Two times the square root of three is just two square root of three. Because two is not underneath radical, but three is. We can't actually make it six or anything like that. Over, what is the square root of three times the square root of three? Square root of nine. Now, what, we want, what might we notice here? It's a perfect square. What is the square root of nine? Three. So it really becomes two times the square root of three over three. So we can't simplify any more than that, but what happened was is we got that square root out of the denominator. We don't like it there. So we kicked it out. It made it look different. So it's still the same number. It just looks a lot different right now. It's still the same number. Okay? Okay. So over here, what well, might we multiply the top and the bottom by to get rid of the square root of 12? The square root of 12 over the square root of 12. Now, why did I choose 12 here when I chose 3 the time before? Yeah, that's the number underneath the radical. The number the radical in the denominator has 12 under it. So we chose 12. And this, square root of 12 over square root of 12, is secretly still just 1. We're not changing the value, we're multiplying by 1. So 3 times the square root of 12 is 3 times the square root of 12. The square root of 12 times the square root of 12 is what? 144 square root of 144. Now we might notice, is 144 a perfect square? Yeah, and if you need to, we can go into this empty box over here, by the way. Okay? Yeah, 144 is a perfect square. What is the square root of 144? 12. Now, are there also any perfect square factors of 12? Are there any factors of 12 that's a perfect square? Let's look up here. Is 9 a, per, is nine a factor of 12? 4 a factor of 12. So we can call the top 3 times the square root of 4 times the square root of what number? 3. Because square root of 4 times square root of 3 is square root of 12. Because normal 4 times normal 3 is normal 4. What is the square root of 4? going. 3 times 2 times the square root of 3 over 12. Okay? Okay. That looks like a really bad answer. I'm going to fix that. Okay. I'll slow down. I'll recap this one once we're done. Yes, sir. Okay, are you good? Yes. Okay, jump. Thanks for telling me. So, 3 times 2 is what number? Six. Okay. This is really weird. Six times the square root of three over twelve. <coughs> and if we look one more time, can we do anything more? Yeah. Yes. We can simplify it. But what can we simplify? Six and twelve. Six and twelve. What goes into both six and twelve? Two. Two. But what else? Three. Three. But what else? Six. Oh. How many times does six go into itself? One. one. So it's just one times the square root of three. Or just the square root of 3. We don't need to write the 1. How many times 6 go into 12? 
Twice. Watch. So that started out pretty crazy, didn't it? And it was like, oh, whoa, 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 with him, we're like, oh, that ends a lot simpler. We had to go through a lot of steps there. Let me talk about it a little more time. So you chose square root of 12 times square root of 12 because it's really one. That square root of 12 is down here. Square root of 12 times square root of 12 is square root of 100, which you said was normal 12. Two times square root of 12 is two times square root of 12. So, normal 12 on the bottom, square root of 12, we said, hey, that's square root of 4 times square root of 3. We can make this a smaller square root. Now it's 3 times 2 times square root of 3, which is 6. That's square root of 3 over 12. And 6 over 12 is 1 over 2, so it's square root of 3 over 2. Now, I want you guys to notice a pattern here. When we had square root of 5 and square root of 5, we ended with the normal 5. When we had square root of 3 and square root of 3, what did we end with down there? Normal 3. Square root of 12 and square root of 12, what did we end up getting there? 12. Normal 12. So anytime you have a square root and a square root, the same square root multiplying with each other, you get the normal number. Because what's going to happen mathematically, what happens mathematically there, is 3 times 3, that's 3 squared. So you're going to get 9. Well, the square root of 3 squared is 3. So you just go back to it. 12 times 12 is 12 squared. So the square root of that is going to be 12. 5 times 5 is 5 squared, so the square root of that is going to be 5. Does that make any sense or no? Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense. Give me a thumbs down if that doesn't make sense. Give me a sideways thumb if you're not even sure what I just asked. Okay, I, want everyone, I want to see everyone's thumb now. I want to see everyone's thumb. Let's see everyone's thumb. Okay. So, okay. Right, so just, just to recap, recap then. For yeah. what? What? I'm sorry, what was that? Um, well, maybe. Yeah. I'll say that. Yeah. Well, maybe, yeah. But I'm thinking about two. Oh, okay. Okay, 9 times the square root of 2 squared. What's the mean to square something? Multiply by itself. It's this many of them, but you got two of them all together. So this is really 9 times the square root of 2 times 9 times the square root of 2. What's 9 times 9? 81. What's the square root of 2 times the square root of 2? Square root of 4 or normal 2. Square root of 4, which is normal 2, because we said the same square root times itself, it's going to be the normal number. Eighty-one times two. Pull your calculator, please. One hundred sixty-two. One hundred sixty-two. Times two. 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 I would have went with the first answer, so I would say just look that up. I would say yes or no. Oh my gosh. How about we do part of the whole <laughs> thing? How about we do no. 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 I do part of the whole thing. Oh, you bring it all together. I should have worked for that. Yeah, but I mean, it's not <laughs> just notice them. Okay. So we have a right triangle. A triangle with one right angle. Okay. Right triangle is a triangle with one right angle. Okay. So we have the sides. Sides are called A, B, and C. Side C is what? What special name do we have? Okay. We'll get there. Okay. What special name do we have for the for side C in a right triangle? Oh, hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. Very good. How do we know where the hypotenuse is all the time? Because it's, it's always, always across from the right angle. It's always across opposite the right angle, so one side not touching the right angle. You can also think of it this way. The right angle, the little box there, is pointing toward the hypotenuse. Uh, are we gonna do... We'll get there. We'll get there. That's sections away. Yeah. Listen, you're learning. learning pretty far ahead. Well, like, you, can... you learn hypotenuse and like right before you learn how to dance. Yeah, toe-toe. I told you. 
I just know what it is, but I don't have, I mean, I do not have the only sound of it. What do we call A and B here? Legs. Legs! They hold up the right angles. A is a leg, B is a leg. Not to be confused with Fred the Fish from SpongeBob. He was the one who always said, My leg! So, um, I think it's also said in one episode, because there, there was a Facebook page years ago called Fred the oh, Fish, in parentheses, yeah. My Leg. But one of my friends and I followed it. They had some pretty interesting videos. They actually dedicated a whole episode to Fred. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I actually found Sweet Victory as a band arrangement. We could totally play it. Please do. Okay. So we have this thing called <laughs> There's a time when they did the Bubble Bowl. And they did the marching band, SpongeBob, Band Geeks. Are you geeks? Have you not seen that episode? Yeah, I totally remember that. There you go, it's better. Okay. So <laughs> Pythagorean theorem. Do you know that for SpongeBob, there's like a pineapple in his bag? Like they made a pineapple shake with the next to a SpongeBob room. And a little I'm on the next page now, bro. Yes! Where's it at? Uh, oh, where's it? Here, I can look, look it up for you. I'm gonna play honeymoon! I was gonna say Oh! oh. We're we'll gonna change all our plans for saying the whole time at this pineapple. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You guys should go there. I'm asking you what's up. Okay, I'll be late. Okay. Anna, Anna might be a joke, but I'll say it's dumb. We'll do it. Okay. Does she like SpongeBob? It's pretty lame. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and knock her in the middle. Like, you know, like after we get married, like hopefully some Saturday morning cartoon sign, you know, we can just like, you know, SpongeBob. You guys already know what you want to watch. What? You guys already know what you want to watch. Uh, not, we haven't found one yet, so. We're gonna start looking here in a couple weeks and we're probably gonna start parking some houses and looking for them. You just kinda of ditched your roommate? Uh yeah, so I have three roommates right now. And actually one of them's ditching me in a couple months. Wait, where do you go? Um where'd you live? I live in Melbourne. Where's your roommate? I have three roommates. They're like they're all I would know them all from college. Yeah. I think you can do it with Oh gosh, it's total but it's a four bedroom house, so. Yeah. Um, it's a pretty yeah. big house. Yeah. But it's a four bed, three bath, so like, we have, we have really. Found it. It's in the Dominican Republic and it's four grand per night. Wait, aren't you? It's a villa. Wait, it's Dominican. Four grand per night? Or 3,800 per night. Yeah, no. Holy. Never mind. Why I'll, make my, in I'll make my own pineapple room for that. Wait, are you going to no, we're going to uh, Mexico next. Yeah. Where is this? Where? Yeah. I have a lifestyle so party to Camino, And then we're going to go a little bit across the uh, Yucatan Peninsula and go to a place called uh, Mayo de Live. It's like, there's like Mayan ruins there and stuff. Yeah. And then we're going to go to Mexico? Merida. Oh, yeah. Really? It's actually built oh, though. Nice. Oh, yeah? That's pretty neat. Exactly. Is it? <laughs> what? Awkward. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, Pythagorean theorem for like the fourth time. In a right triangle, if the legs have lengths A and B, which right now length of this is A, length of this is B, and the hypotenuse has length C, which it is, then C squared equals B squared plus B squared. Yeah. Well, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I'm just gonna say it a different word, but this is the same thing. Same thing. Okay. A squared plus B squared will equal C squared. If we take the side length of the leg, square it. Side length of the other leg squared, add them together, it'll equal the side length of our hypotenuse squared. And we'll do a right triangle. It's pretty cool. Really? So, 100%. I learned that C squared equals A squared plus B squared. That's the same thing. Like, I know that it's A squared plus B squared, but she always told us it was B squared. Hey, I don't know. Unit, why. unit of property. You can rearrange the equation any way, and it's still the same. Not unit of property, but yes, you can <laughs> rearrange the equation. What? Property limit. Okay. Uh, the no. property, no. I mean, there's symmetric property of equality. Symmetric property, yeah, right. That one. But, um, yeah, so a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or c squared equals a squared. Chris, are you looking that up right now? Yeah. Okay, let me know what you find, okay? Mm -hmm. So, 
Um, we're going to use this to find the length of this hypotenuse, x. <laughs> Next episode. So, this is a right triangle. That means we can use the Pythagorean theorem. We're given the length of the what? The lengths. We're trying to find the length of the hypotenuse. So, in our Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. This can be a formula we can use, and we can plug in things that we don't know. So, what can I plug in for A? Five. Cool. Five squared. What can I plug in for B? Five. Twelve. Cool. It could have been either one. We could have done twelve squared plus five squared. It could be five squared plus twelve squared. Because at the end of the day, do we care whether we add whether we add five squared first or second? Okay. And this will equal what's our C? X. So that's our setup. Questions on how we went from this to this. Why did you change the x to x? Because the length is called x here. No. Yep. Doesn't really matter. Okay. Was the c because it's twelve? No. Because the hypotenuse has to be longer than the other two sides, so it could be twelve because it's already twelve. So. 5 and 12 had to be either A or B. We can put it, we can put either one for A or B. We don't care which one's A or B. But it has to be A and B. One of them has to be A, one of them has to be B. Because they're the lengths. Okay. What is 5 squared? 25. Is not the answer? Okay. No. What is 12 squared? 144. 144. And X squared is just X squared. Quantified as x squared. But technically, if, it, if x is 1 or 0, then that would be true. But only in those scenarios. So quantified as x squared, that's your question. 25 plus 144. 169 equals x squared. Now, does anybody remember how we get x by itself? How do we undo a square? Okay, so we undo addition with what? Subtraction. We undo multiplication with? So we're going to do a square with a square root. And so just like you would add both sides, or subtract both sides, or multiply both sides, divide both sides, we square root both sides. And so we say, hey, what is the square root of 169? And before we start going in and looking at our perfect square factors and doing what we did earlier on the previous page at the top, we say it's 169 perfect square. And it's what times what? 13 times 13. You're doing divided by 2. So we're doing square root, you're doing divided by 2. Okay? Like, you're so 2,000 and late, or so 3,000 and late. Oh, so, I thousand. Yeah, it's the quote from the song. 3,000 and late. I'll bet you literally know that. Like, by what? You should bet that you're not already have that. Nothing. No. We're not doing that. Yes. Okay, I, I want to see. I want to see if she's right. Okay, wait. I'm. I bet. I no, kind right of now. think. What? Right now. Bet. What's wrong? I bet oh, Emily's oh, back for a double no. Oh, Okay, what? Okay. Can you say this anymore? What are you guys betting on right now? With a song. No, 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 Wait, I don't bet. I'm saying it's <laughs> 2,000 and late. And you're, so, you're so 2,000 and late, I'm so 3,008. And I'll be like, 3,000? Wait, 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 I don't want to bet anymore. Oh, why you're not? You're right, you're right. Yeah, I know. 3,000 the charge. Oh, I thought you right. were saying that you, you knew what was going to happen. Yeah, yeah, no, I didn't. No, I thought he was saying he knows for a fact it's 3,000. Yeah. It but. is. I'm 100% sure of it. No, say, say, say it again. Okay, you're so 2,000 and late. Yeah, and so I thought you were saying I'm so 3,000 and late. 
Oh no, Kevin's more. No, I'm I'm the I'm the future version. He's out of date. Oh. Okay. So 13 is equal to well, what's the square root of x squared? What times what is x squared? X. X times x is x squared. So 13 is x. So what's the length of our our hypotenuse? 13. And if we plug it back in here, we end up getting it equal to. Okay. Well, that's that line. Right? I don't know. Well, Grace told me. Yeah, that would cause me. Thank you, Grace. So. Okay. So. Okay. I mean, I couldn't be good cause with that money in the suit. Because like, I feel like that like leads to like you know me getting in trouble somehow. Like candy bar. That's fair. Is it? Oh, you bet. It's kind of like you know like a song lyric. I guess it's not. We got lost in the Super Bowl squirt thingy. Hey, normally when you take the square root of both sides like we just did there, you have to account for a positive and negative version of something. And the reason why is if, if I say x squared is equal to 9, I'm just making up a random number right now, and I square root both sides, not only can x equal 3, because 3 times 3 is 9, but what times itself is also equal to 9? Negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 3 is also equal to 9. So it could be the positive or negative version. But the only reason we didn't have to worry about that here is because we're dealing with a length. Can you have a negative 13 for a length? No, you can't have negative distance. We covered that back in chapter 1. You can't have negative distance. You can only have positive distance. Even if you walk backwards, it's still a positive distance. You're just walking backwards. It's not like it's negative distance all of a sudden. Okay. Have you guys ever seen Ferris Bueller's Day Off? A little bit. Okay. I so, think yeah, yeah. No, no, I mean, no. Yeah, you're right though. So they have a car, and they like it's like it's like one of their guys, like one of the friends, like a really nice car that their dad owns, and like they take it out for a joyride, and it's like, oh, we'll just reset the odometer so that you know your dad doesn't know we drove it. And so like they put like it on blocks and like try and like put it in reverse, and like it ends up not going in reverse. It ends up going in reverse. I don't want to. This is really old. So it ends up like going off the blocks and like it's in reverse, and you just have it like, um, like planted down with the gas pedal and going in reverse. And like it ends up getting like off the blocks, and so like the car goes back down, and it goes like through a window into a tree, into a bunch of trees, and like on the ground, and like it's like this. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yes. <laughs> right. Okay. Anyway. Oh. Huh. Okay. Pythagorean triples. We have this neat thing called Pythagorean triple. I think it's neat. So these are a set of three positive integers, whole numbers, that form a right triangle. So if you have the side lengths 3, 4, and 5, it forms a right triangle. 5, 12, and 13 forms a right triangle. We actually just had the 5, 12, 13 one a moment ago. 8, 15, 17, 7, 24, 25, this one is great. Okay. So, but here's the thing with it. Is if you see, if you notice you have a right triangle, Get my random right triangle, and I have this side length three, this side length five, because five is the hypotenuse is the longest. I know without even doing the Pythagorean theorem, this one has to be four. And if I did the Pythagorean theorem to check three squared plus b squared equals five squared, this, this would be our unknown one. Nine to nine plus b squared is equal to twenty-five. Subtract nine, subtract nine. B squared equals sixteen. What's the square root of 16? Four. Four. So I automatically know. Change these out. Now I say this is 8, 17. This one has to be what? 18. It has to be. Pretty neat. So it's just um, common ones. You don't, I'm not, not going to ask you guys to memorize these. Um, yeah, like you would never lose points for not having them memorized or anything like that. Um, but it's just gonna be handy if you didn't like to remember a couple of them. The most common ones we use are these first two. Now the thing is, is it can also be multiples of it. So it could be six, eight, and anyone who gets the last number? 10, it could be six, eight, and 10. I can multiply them all by two, and that'd be another triple. Or I can multiply them by all by three, and it'd be nine, 12, and 15. So if we had two sides that were nine and 12, and they're the legs, the hypotenuse has to be 15. You just have to be careful that the biggest number always has to be the hypotenuse in these triples. 
we're going to call this long side. We'll go through example two, and then I think we'll wrap up here, okay? Did you? So in example two, we're going to try and find x, and I'm just circle and say, hey, there it is, okay? Um, but we're going to, and then we're going to write our answer in simplest radical form. So here, we have how many triangles do we see in this picture? Three. Three. We have two small ones, and then the big one they make together. Now the two small ones are what kind of triangles? No? Right. Right triangles, so this is the right angle. And this one has to be a right angle then too. This is a straight line. Those are both right triangles, okay? Now, and for the Pythagorean theorem to work, we need to know how many of the sides to find the third. Two. Two. Where x is, do we know two of the sides of this right triangle? No. No, we don't. Okay? But can we find this side? Yeah, use the other right triangle on the left here, and we can find this side. How can we find that side? Six squared plus b squared, if we call this b, equals ten squared. How do we already know it? It's a, how do we know it's a? It's a Pythagorean triple. Six to the leg times the hypotenuse. The other one has to be eight. Very good. You just saved some time, Grace. Because otherwise you have to go through, say, 36 plus b squared equals 100. Subtract 36. b squared equals 100. And get, what do you mean? Oh, 100. b squared equals 64. And then say, oh, the square root of 64 is 8. It's like, boom, I got this Pythagorean triple, and that side's 8. Now, we know this side is 8, this side is 12, and this side is x. So now can we find x in this right triangle on the right here? Okay, this one unfortunately is not a Pythagorean triple. Darn. Okay. But we can set up the Pythagorean theorem here. How can we set up the Pythagorean theorem here for this triangle on the right? Help me with that. Okay? Yes. 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 Very good. 8 and 12 are the legs. And it wouldn't have mattered whether Grace put 8 or 12 first. We don't really care. But she put those both in the leg spots, which is great. Next word in the hypotenuse spot, which is also great. So what's 8 squared here, Mason? 64. What is 12 squared, Clyde? 144. And x squared is just x squared. So now we have to take 64 plus 144. And Kayla, what's 64 plus 144? Oh, I don't know either, that's why I asked you. 208. So now, what we can do. Uh, the new notepad tags are in the corner of my desk. Just take a seat for now, and I'm going to um, finish off the problem. Okay? So now we have the square root of both sides of x squared by itself. And we say x is equal to the square root of 208. Now, 208 is not a perfect square right now, but we're told to do it in simplest radical form. We need to run the type in the calculator, and we're going to do that same thing we did earlier. So, square root of 208. Are there any perfect squares that go into 208? Let's so let's take our perfect square list and we're dividing. Okay, 225 is too big, 196. Okay, so let's start dividing. Okay, take calculators, take calculators. Chris, take your calculator out. Pi, get your calculator out. Get your phone out. Get your calculator out. Phone. 208 divided by 196. 298, 208 divided by 169. 208 divided by 144. Let me know when somebody finds a perfect square that goes into this. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, we're on the second page. Can we find one? Find you find one? Why are you not looking? Oh, what are you guys doing? You better love my joke. I expect magic shirt. Found one. What'd you find? 16. 16! Square root of 16 has the square root of 13. Square root of 16 is 4. So x is equal to the square to 4 times the square root of 13, and that's our answer. Wow, well, you're almost there. I'm watching you. One away, or two big, one, yeah, right, one away. Okay. And like I said, there's no homework today. Thanks, Grace. Yeah. Yeah. Oh.